Well, good morning again, everyone, and, and I want to send a welcome out to any of those who are viewing our lesson uh, today via our, our website or our Facebook page or perhaps on our, our YouTube channel. Uh, the lesson is, as we've been saying, the second installment of our prosperity series for this year, a series that we've titled Dare to Prosper, which aligns with our overall theme for 2020 of Dare to Make a Difference. And we're using that word DARE as an acronym, and it stands for Dream It, Affirm It, Realize It, and Express It. The first installment of the series was offered back in January. It was a part of our Spiritual Master series at that time. And we took a look at the teachings of prosperity as lived and modeled by Unity Minister and Prosperity Master, Eric Butterworth. We took some time to consider some of his views relative to living an abundant life and, and all the many ways that abundance and prosperity can, can take form and, and come into our experiences. And today, our lesson is going to center on Unity's first basic teaching. It's going to be one big invitation to us to expand the ways in which we live our first principle and the way we live it at all times and through all things. Now, as you can imagine, a whole lot has been written about Unity's five basic spiritual principles. And, and I found a great article about principle number one that was in Unity magazine about a year ago now. It was written by Ben Jamison. Uh, ben Jamison is someone who uh, was raised in, in Unity. He's also a Centers for Spiritual Living practitioner. He is also an ordained minister through divine science. And perhaps the one question that could summarize everything that we're going to be exploring today is, what would my life be like if I approached everything as if God is all there is? What would my life be like? What would your life be like you know, if you and I approached everything as if God is all there is? So let's begin by reminding ourselves what our first basic spiritual teaching is. And it is not always worded exactly the same way. You can go to 10 different Unity websites, probably maybe find 10 different variations of, of the principle itself, but the underlying teaching is always the same. And so I thought I would offer to you the words that Ben Jamison used to express it in his article. And so our first principle, there is only one presence and one power, active as the universe and as my life. God the good omnipotence. I'll say it again. There is only one presence and one power active in the universe and as my life. God the good omnipotence. Now this principle of ours may be the most well known um, as it's been a, a mainstay in many ministries around the globe uh, continues to be that such in, in that they, re they recite this principle as a part of their Sunday services every single week. Some might say that it, it, it is the most compelling of our principles, the most powerful of our principles. Well, you can decide for yourself as we take a closer look at it today. So let's start by taking a closer look at just what the word principle itself means in, in our context for today and what we're invited to do with it in, in our lives. So by definition, a principle can be defined as you know ethics, beliefs, moralities, creeds, doctrines, whatever it is that we call upon to serve as the foundation for our spiritual practices. And when we speak of spiritual principles, we speak of them as being universal in nature. They don't apply just to one person or one group of people or one area of, of a country, one place in the world. They are universal in nature and they are unchanging. What does change is our understanding of them. You know, our understanding grows and expands as we grow and expand in spiritual consciousness. Just as with just about anything else, the more we engage with a principle, the more we study it, the more we go deeper into it, the more we apply it, the more active it becomes in our lives, the more life it takes on through us. So as we consider going deeper into a principle, two things uh, that, that Ben Jamison reminds us of. And the first is that rote recitation of a spiritual principle will do relatively little for our spiritual growth. We have got to go deeper than just mindlessly repeating a set 
a set group of words and then secondly going deeper is not always going to be comfortable for us because we're putting so much of ourselves under a telescope for only our eyes to see you know we're going to be taking a look at at our beliefs you know our thoughts our our behaviors our reactions and and when we do this honestly if we do this honestly we might not always like what we see or we might not be willing or have the courage to accept what we see but that's the beauty of principle and its unchanging nature it is always going to be there for us to fall back into and allow it to support us in being able to make the effort to do so and to achieve that greater level of understanding and to grow and expand in our spiritual consciousness so let's unpack Let's unpack this powerful first principle of unity. And maybe the first thing we ought to do is to set an intention to not have it be a rote experience. And by that, I mean that when we say those words, there is only one presence and one power, active as the universe and as my life, God, the good omnipotence. We don't stop there. Right in that moment, when those words are fresh in our minds, they're making their way more into, more deeply into our hearts, then we start asking ourselves, okay, what do those words truly mean? What do they mean? How far reaching is this principle? How far reaching in general? How far reaching just for me, for me or for you in our own lives? Right in this moment, right after I've spoken those words, what are my beliefs? What are my thoughts? How have I acted lately? How have I been behaving lately? And when all those answers start to make themselves known to us, then we ask, okay, now how does all of this align with the principle? You know, how well, where am I doing really well in embodying it, in expressing it? Do I notice places where there's some gaps? Do I notice some places where I could improve? Now, a moment ago, I made a comment about the potential for discomfort when posing these kinds of questions to ourselves, especially if we do see something in ourselves that is out of alignment with this particular principle. But please note that what I just said in what that last question was the word notice. Where do I notice some unalignment? Notice what seems to be somewhat removed from principle. Notice it. Don't judge it. And don't judge yourselves. See, when you just notice and then can just lovingly accept whatever it is you see, that's when you empower yourself to change, to choose anew, to grow and expand your life in new ways that you wish, that your heart desires. All right, so now let's, let's start breaking down the components of the principle that ask us con to consider how we are living this principle or maybe not living from this principle. So the first thing I want to pull out of, out of the, um, the, the, principle, the, the wording of the principle itself is, is God. You know, simply God. You know, what Unity teaches about God you know, is that the God is unlimited. God is unconditional love. It, it, it is absolute perfection. The spirit has, has always existed. It always will. And that this presence, this, this one power, this presence, it is always a kind and generous presence. It's always giving freely of itself and always giving in that way at all times. I just used four words at least. God, it, spirit, and presence all referring to the very same one presence and power presented in our first principle. And I did so because maybe the first question folks are going to want to ask as you begin your personal unpacking processes is, do I even like that word God? And I know that there are some with us today that do not. I have encountered many people over the years for whom that word just does not resonate with them. And that's why I try, I try to be mindful and offer you know, additional ways in which to describe it when I'm offering a lesson or when I'm in prayer with someone. So once you decide what name, what word you do prefer, then the question becomes, okay, what do I believe 
about X, whatever your preferred reference is? Where do my current beliefs align with Unity's teachings about it as contained in this first principle? Do I notice any gaps that exist? Okay, so that's maybe the first step for some. So then we can look at the first phrase. Only one presence and one power. And what this is saying about the one presence is that in absolute reality, nothing other than God exists. There is no opposite to God. There is no opposing energy or force against spirit. There's no you know, devil or Satan figure. And so if nothing else exists but spirit, then that means that spirit must be in you. Spirit must be in me. It must be in everything around us. And this means that it is present in all that you love and in all those people or things that are hard for you to love. Ben reminds us of this truth. He says, this is true regardless of whether someone else knows it or acts like it. The concept of the one power takes the one presence a step further. It tells us that spirit is not only everything that we see, it is also the power behind everything we do. Yeah. Lifting your coffee cups as you're listening to this lesson, breathing your next breath, turning your head to look out the window at the beauty, be, beauty around us. You know, from birthing this entire universe to the most mundane tasks, it's the same power behind it all. So that brings us to the phrase, active as the universe and as my life. See, this one presence and one power, it's not sitting on a throne somewhere, just watching all of us do what we do. It's not an idol or inert energy biding its time for some reason. This is an, a presence and a power that is always loving. It is always creating. It is always active. Even when we aren't consciously creating, God is. I mean, how many times have you not been thinking about something that is in your life? You haven't been thinking about it at all. And then the next moment you receive, in some form, the next piece to the puzzle of that something. You know, you hear that song, or you see a phrase on a billboard, you overhear a comment from a total stranger, you see a magazine article, a Facebook post. Those are the ways that you can rest assured and know that spirit is always active, both as this universe and as your life. And then lastly, we come to the words good omnipotence. Those are pretty self-explanatory words. As we consider them in the context of, of our first principle, where we're being offered that God is all-powerful good. It is inherent good. It is unlimited good. It does not need to be acknowledged. It does not need to be recognized. And there is absolutely nothing that can change it, alter it, or diminish it in any way. All right, so let's kind of do a little bit of a, a, a summary here. And so far, what we've offered is that, you know, God is all there is. That loving presence that birthed everything and is expressing as everyone, it's present everywhere, all the time. At the core of every person, there is spirit. In the midst of every situation, God is there. And so now we look at everything that we've unpacked and laid around on the floor all around us here, and we start to ask ourselves, okay, how am I living this principle? How much of my life do I approach in this way? How different would my life, how different would our world be if I approached everything in this way? Do I see any gaps, any you know, misalignments? Am I remaining free of self-judgment and self-blame? What am I simply noticing about myself? Now, Ben Jameson in his article said that most of us, most of us rarely approach life with this principle at the forefront of our minds. He thinks there's two reasons why that may be. The first reason he offered was a lack of awareness. And the second reason 
was the lack of easy to use spiritual tools that can help us get back into alignment with this principle. Now, we've already addressed the first one, our individual awarenesses, as we've looked at each element of the principle and we've held it up to the light of our own individual spiritual consciousness. So now let's take a look at a few of those spiritual tools. And they might not be the kind of tools that you're expecting might you know, be the next words that I'll, that I'll speak. And I say that because often, you know, when we talk about spiritual tools, it's very, very common to hear things like prayer and meditation, mindful walking, journaling, certain, you know, sacred rituals that we have and so forth. And of course, they're all very valid and you could use them, you know, in this case. But what Ben offered in his article instead was, was, was qualities. He gave us spiritual qualities, these, these more intangible things, yet just as powerful and always present to us when we turn within to spirit's presence in us. And so the first quality he offered as a spiritual tool was love. Love, love that we can consciously engage in and practice. There's a phrase that, that he coined for himself as he works with this principle in his life, and he called it existence level loving. Existence level loving. So that when he's practicing this, practicing seeing the love that spiritual principle says is present in every single person, at the core of every single person, he said, we can all just hold the thought, I love you because you simply exist. I love you because you simply exist. What someone may have said or done or not said or not done is not at issue. It is, doesn't even come into the picture. We just recognize that since God is all there is, it is in that particular person. It does not mean that we love the person's personality or the certain actions they may have taken. It does mean that we can always love spirit. So we practice. We practice looking for, finding, seeking out, seeing that sacred center in every person, and we love that. We align ourselves with that love within each of us, and we bring the first principle into practice. And we can practice this love, you know, on a, like a, a two-way street. You know, if we are having a really hard time seeing this, this love, of God in a particular person or in a given situation, well, maybe, maybe we're the ones that are supposed to bring it. Maybe we're the ones that are to be it. You know, I can think of situations right now that, you know, where there are, there are wonderful opportunities to practice this, this tool of, of love. Yeah, I think back even just over maybe six months, eight, eight months, local news stories and, you know, on, on, on the media news and, and in the newspapers and so forth. Things like, you know, city and county commissioner meetings, school board meetings that have gotten fairly contentious at times, ugly at times. More recently, protests against the stay-at-home orders that have consisted of carrying you know, automatic weapons and nooses and, and, and a preponderance of death threats against elected officials. We don't have to be, become part or get involved in those conversations if we don't want to, but we can virtually plug into meetings and just practice being love and sending that love to everyone concerned. We can take note of a time when a particular protest is scheduled to begin. And then we can take five minutes, we can take 10 minutes, whatever it is, and just move into that love within us and just start sending that out to everyone involved. It was a couple of weeks, it'll be two weeks ago tomorrow actually, that I had an opportunity to, to plug in you know, live to one of the news conferences that our governor, Governor Whitmer, has been offering as we've been moving through the, the COVID-19 experience. And she stepped up to the lectern and uh, the first thing she, she acknowledged was the, the protests that have been taking place and uh, the, just the, the animosity uh, that, that, that was being shown. Um, just be, between and amongst people that, that just didn't have a place. 
And she, she said, this is not a time for that. There's really never a time for that. But especially now, we need to be coming together. We need to have unity with each other. And so she announced that before the news conference detail would begin, she had invited four members of the clergy, different faith traditions, to offer prayer. And that she had asked them to offer prayers for unity. And so there was a a Catholic priest, there was a rabbi, there was a, an Islamic uh, imam, and there was a Baptist minister. And each one of them spoke about five minutes each. And so 20 minutes of prayer out of a 60 minute overall news conference was what grounded that session. And I've never seen a more power felt, a more powerful experience of acknowledging the, the power of love, the power of prayer, the power of, of unity, and allowing that to be the energy with which we then you know, moved into all that she and, and her, her team there had to, had to offer. And, and even if it doesn't make a difference in somebody else, imagine how different you will feel. And if you do choose to get involved in the conversation around any of these issues or others at any time, think about how your, your entry will be, 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 be based. It will be based out of love, not out of stress, not out of anger, not out of frustration. You will be coming from a place of love. The next quality that Ben offered as a spiritual tool is introspection. And this one could be really beneficial if we're having any trouble with that part of the principle that teaches that good is everywhere, in every situation, no matter what. What we have to keep in mind is that the principle is not saying that every situation is good. It is saying there is good to be had in every situation. And once again, as always, it is up to us to seek it out to look for it, to find it, to be an embodiment of that good. And we can do this by maybe asking, what is this experience here to, to teach me or to teach us? You know, how could I grow as I move through this particular situation? Or maybe we're going to be, to be taken to deeper levels of understanding about things like personal courage, personal surrender, or, or maybe it's an experience that's going to shine you know, a brighter light on our own power our own power, or maybe on some aspect of self-judgment that it is finally time for us to let go of. You know, as much as, as we can conjecture for each other, we can't tell anybody else what growth opportunities exist for them at, at any time. Each of us as individuals are the only ones that can uncover what those are for us. We're individually the only ones that can shift shift our thinking from a negative focus to one that is more affirmative in nature. And we're the only ones, each of us individually, that can make that choice to align more closely with principle. And I would imagine move through whatever's before us much more quickly and with a whole lot more grace. Now, the last two qualities for consideration are compassion and self-forgiveness. You see, living, living this first principle it is not easy. Sometimes we do just simply forget, and other times we're very, very aware of it, and we just fall short. You know, we fail in some way. And it's so important that we don't fall into practices of berating ourselves or shaming ourselves. You know, it took me a while, but I finally figured out that beating myself up doesn't help me shift from whatever it is I'm beating myself up about. Right? I'm just giving it all the more energy. And so it's important to, to be kind to ourselves. It's important to offer ourselves compassion, offer ourselves forgiveness. Forgiveness for, for judging ourselves, blaming ourselves, seeing ourselves as failures when we don't show up in the way we wanted to or intended. As soon as those energies of compassion and forgiveness become you know, a practice for us, the more we begin to offer those energies to ourselves, the sooner it is that we can begin to release whatever needs to be let go and establish our lives, our lives in new and grander, larger ways and do so more firmly grounded in the teachings that underlie our first basic principle. There is only one presence and one power 
active as the universe and as my life. God the good omnipotence. This presence and power is the only life that exists. It's the life you live. And to echo the words of Ben Jameson, you are that unconditional love. You are that omnipotent good. You are the power that birthed this universe. And you can use that power to create a life that is filled with abundance and prosperity in all its many forms and do so beyond your wildest of dreams. God bless you.